Hey, 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 it's Dan on live. We're up here in Woodland Hills, and we're here to see this fella right here, Mr. Gary O. Wells. And I'm here with my buddy Pete. Hi, Gary. Good oh, morning. Hey, Good. Welcome, welcome. We're going to do a walk in, and the we're going to. the house of something or other. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see some of the coolest I've things. On this stuff too. Wow, look at that. You, 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 get very pretty. you do everything. Look at that. How beautiful that it's is. Amazing what yeah. water does out yeah. here in this desert. Uh huh. This was a desert out here. Wow. And who might that be? What do you be? got really over there? What up? Look at you. The side we never see, the working oh, yeah. side of you. Wow. Check oh, this yeah. out. Gross, yeah. yeah. What are you working on? We just came up with our. With our idea not 10 minutes ago. Really? And we're using a Seagrave radiator. Uh huh. Yeah, we just a little modification here. We're using a 1928 cast alloy uh, firewall, and that is from a 28 ALF. Wow. And of course, we've got an engine out of another one at the Type uh, 75, which is a 14 liter engine. Anyhow, this is going to be. Unbelievable, and we're gonna, of course, this is not gonna be how the radiator looks. We're, right. We'll be, I'll be doing tacking. our old radiator shell over this because the matrix on this is the original honeycomb. It's unbelievable, and I didn't have a radiator. All I had was a radiator, small radiator shell. Ow. So we're gonna have to cut all this down. I said I hate to cut that down, and so we came up with this idea. So we'll build off of here, and we'll make a. They'll make a new hood and all that stuff. We've got all the other bits and pieces. Cool. I, I, I like I like the concept of uh, a new a new way to use an engine hoist. Huh? Yeah. Everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Think, things I'm learning right here. It's engine very, hoists just aren't for engines to lift, to lift radiators up too. Absolutely. That radiator yeah. must be heavy, huh? Uh, you can bet on that one. Yeah. Look at the size of this thing. So this is going to be. This is number. This is number eight. Number eight. Number eight. But in between number eight, we do did the uh, the two twin rolls. We did the little the Bentley here. We've right. done all a bunch of cars up here. We did the hundredth anniversary car for Hudson Motor, made out of the out of the original. Uh, uh, what the hell was that? Uh, Grapes of Wrath car. Uh huh. Uh, the old truck that the family moved in. We found it had been parked for 69 years in Culver City. Wow. In the same building, same place. It had gone through three different owners. Well, I'm going to restore it someday. He croaked. Yeah. Another guy buys <laughs> the building with it in there and fits his cars in there. I'm going to do it. He croaked. And the third guy said, I'm giving up. I'm moving out. And we bought a fire truck. And I saw it. I said, what's, what's that with a dust this high on it? And he said, oh, that thing's been here since, you know, the movie. I said, what do you mean, what movie? He said, Grapes of Wrath. There it was. There's pictures of it up here. Wow. And it's in the original car. And so, anyhow, we were able to pull that make out. Make it into something special yeah. for them. So, this is going to be the Lab Labristione number eight. This is number eight. Wow. It's amazing how, we, with all the shows you guys go to and all the, the beautiful grounds that you attend to, that you have time to do all this. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. it's wonderful. But we just it just just came to us in the last fifteen minutes. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and said, I wonder. And then Andres got here and we put our heads together and that's what we're gonna do. You're gonna see something completely different. It's gonna look probably kinda beasty like the beast of Turini look. It's gonna be totally different. It's not gonna be that our normal boat tail. Now now this frame here, where did this frame come out of? This came out of a nineteen twenty eight uh uh, type 75 triple combination American LaFrance fire truck <laughs> and it was a local truck wow. So it's a California piece. It's it absolutely is the best one we've ever seen and uh, All these little parts all the every little bolt every little thing on it is absolutely like brand new Had a little patina of rust on it right and you glass beat it and it's boom. There's absolutely no zero deterioration it had been parked Probably for 35 years that we bought it. This is the one we bought, Pete. Ah, uh, in Orange County. That's what I was gonna Here say. You. I, uh, and you, that's when we brought the little tractor back in that. And it's absolutely amazing condition. You can take a look at some of the parts. It's just like wow. I was gonna say so because I think I was with you that day. I wasn't there when you bought it, but I was there but in the morning. That lot, lot was, was large. Yeah. Pieces and terrible. Right. Thing and we. 
And that's what we did. We and used a lot of the bits and pieces out of it and some of the bits and pieces out of the new one that we found in Las Vegas. Jeez. So they've, they've been sitting for yeah, since the 60s. Since, wow, okay. So yeah, you've come a long way. Yeah, it just, it just happens all of a sudden, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll show him the block. Yeah, oh here. Yeah, and this, Take and a that's an oil pan. pan. Wow, what's that, that's like a 50 pan, gallon like pan? That. Three days of work to get it looking like that. Jeez. And these boxes, you might say, what is that? Well, you know, we wrap our springs, as you can see on some of the other cars that are in here. Uh huh. And it's always cost me about 135 bucks for the 1,200 feet of sash cord right and then you have to have it shipped and everything well i contacted uh, uh amazon because i'm a new member of amazon prime, prime blah, blah. so <laughs> let me tell you something folks don't always just think you're getting the best price from amazon they wanted 300 and something dollars for one of these boxes and i said well what the hell is going on that's way <laughs> too much so i got online and i found this old boy back east and he says yeah yeah I bought a whole skip load of the things. He said, I got 12 left. And he said, $50, and don't you try to grind me down. I said, grind you down. I'm going to buy two of the damn things. <laughs> I sent him, sent him the money, and he would take nothing but cash. So I sent him the money. Anyhow, these two came, $100 for pills. So we got enough to do a couple or yeah. three <laughs> bestionis and all the other Looks cars. like you're going to be busy for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is our block. Yeah. And that is a block. Andres is the expert on this. Andres, tell me a little about it. Yeah. Get in here, tell him. Look at that flywheel. Oh my God. So this is out of uh, 19, what year was this? 28. 28. 1928. Yeah, 28. Aluminum block. These are the big rods. It's all uh, sand cast. Here goes the generator. We're going to install an alternator probably. Okay. Here goes the water pump attaches to this shaft. That's for the belt. For you and then timing gear in front of it. Bronze it's gears. All, it looks uh, dirty now. It is dirty, but we're gonna. If it looks big, it it's because it is big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I think that's the biggest six cylinder I've ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty it's big. It's a big sucker. Wow. Look at that fly with that fly we was. Yeah, my yeah. god. You need we'll you need two engine that. hoists probably to lift that up, huh? That's why we know all the Uses for the engine hose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to learn the hard way, huh? Right. Wow. Right behind you. Directly behind you. Ooh. That uh, comes up nice. Rear end and differential. All in one. Yes, yeah. sir. Wow. Yeah. They're pretty. Ahead, ways to be finished, but they're pretty ahead of their time to put that combo together like that, huh? It's all sunken bronze. Wow. It's these cars and trucks were made to last a hundred years. And they all did. At least all of ours have. This is uh, only 90 years old. It's a baby. Uh, <laughs> but this piece right over here is what's set on top of the transaxle. And this is geared and this would run the pumps. This is the little pump that came on this one. Wow. Is that enormous? Whoa. And this is all silicon bronze. So we're not going to use it. I just hope that we can find somebody that, that needs it. Yeah. This is a thousand gallons a minute. This is seven hundred and fifty a minute, and the one behind you on the left is about six hundred. And so they span about between a hundred and five years to ninety years. Jeez. So they anyhow, must, that's this is what we do. And what we have. They must weigh a ton. So if anybody needs one. Contact yeah. us because we've got all the bits and pieces for them. They're all out of real low mileage trucks. I mean, even if you weren't going to use it for a truck, you just wanted some uh, office furniture or living room furniture. Sure there you be. have it. And this this has all been re chromed so this will just touch right up. Touch right up. All yeah. the other bits go with it are there. Yeah. All right. Well, what else we got, Gary? Well, come on in the garage. Right. This is a cool garage. Man, a lot of history here. And there I bet, and I bet here. between both of you guys, you know where every pool well, is. Take a look at the springs; you'll get a kick out of them. <laughs> they need to be wrapped. 
Wow. New bolts, new sleeves we got for that. Jeez. That's those are the rear ones. Rear we springs. took out about four four different sleeve uh, leaves off of the original one. So that's lighten. This is the front ones. A little smaller. Yeah. yeah. We do wow. a little bit of a thing here that we take the original sleeve pieces off and we make them out of copper. It's 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 so they'll look better. And then we wrap the springs. Uh -huh. And the reason we do that, there's three things you can do with the spring. You can paint it, you can cover it with leather, and they all deteriorate and scratch, and the leather uh, uh, just gets hard as a rock, or you can wrap them with rope. And where we heard about that is that the old racers that used to race on the board tracks, there was one on Wilshire Boulevard and the freeway, and that's the turn of the century, and they'd race on this board track, and the two by fours, rough cut two by fours, would be set on end on end, so it was pretty stable, but it was rough as hell. So when you'd be bouncing around, if a spring leaf broke and went out behind you, it'd probably kill the guy behind you. Right. Or if you got really unlucky, it'd get you when you came around again. <laughs> so they would wrap these all with uh, a wire, uh, with the, uh, the rope. And you can see it here on this one. And oh, here's a better one. Okay. You can see it here where it's wrapped. Oh, yeah. And then what they would do is take the old crankcase oil and pour it on it and what would happen it would discolor it but the good oil would go in keep the springs lubricated and tight and the dirt in the outside so these guys were smart yeah they're really smart sorry they're so dirty but we've been well yeah you've been working yeah you know places about as clean as you're ever going to see it and these are some of the bits and pieces most of the pumps are aluminum this one here happened to have one of the great silicon bronze ones these are beautiful and then pieces. these were plated we we unplate them okay. we glass beat them and clean them up and then it's it's the the, the bling bling yeah we're kings of the bling bling wow. and we do enjoy it now here's an interesting little piece this is a spitdorf magneto and what makes it interesting it's identical to the one that was on Lindbergh's spirit of st louis same people made it same thing hmm. just just a little bit of information on on that. And these are these little Scheibler carburetors. They're beautiful. We yeah. haven't polished it, and Andreas has got to rebuild it and do everything to it. But they're they're going to be beautiful when they're done. So you got here at the right time. Yeah, geez. To get a chance to see it. Here's some of the parts over here. I invite you to look at this. These are ones that we've already done. These are the carriers on the rear axle for the chain drive. And when I'm saying wow. the condition of these things are pretty good, look at that. Is that beautiful? Wow. Gorgeous. I mean, you couldn't do any better than that. No. This is 90 years old. Never probably hadn't been sitting inside for good and God knows how long. But all of the little bits and pieces, we go through everything. And we make them absolutely perfect the way they should work. We combine the two braking on the braking system. You've got exterior brakes on the brake drums that are the ones that actually work with your foot pedal. But the inside brake drums, which you would think would be, you know, the regular drum brakes, they're for the emergency brake. We, Andreas combines those two together so they're working. So you've got really good brakes on the rear. There are no brakes on the front wheels at all. So we incorporate to a friend of ours who was an all-time machinist, hot rod guy, in fact, did all the Shelby stuff in the early years, and name of Kurt Hamilton, Hamilton Engineering. And he is the one that converts our front wheels and puts the bracketry and wells all the bracketry on it so we can incorporate disc brakes on the front. So we have disc brakes on the front, power, they're, they're vacuum operated, and then the rear brakes, which are mechanical. And we get these all coordinated and, and sync together so we have actual pretty good brakes. And then through Lee Engineering, we put on a, a power steering assist, which you have to have. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't drive these. These things will do 100 miles an hour. Right. So you want to be able to drive it commensurate with the speeds of today with safety. Right. And that's the trick on this thing. Yeah. So all these little bits and pieces uh, are unbelievable. And I think I attribute it all to my 
our most important equipment is our glass beater. Yeah, I was going to say, about that glass beater, you really... It turns... Yeah. These were horrible looking things. You could not even believe how awful they looked. Full of grease. We'll put on a little demonstration later on. You, okay. can, you can video it. It's just amazing. You could you could spend a whole lot of time with all the glass beating that you have to do. Oh, huh? have a ball! That's yeah. it's it's instant, it's instant satisfaction. All right. I mean, it's it's really fun. You take an old horrible looking thing and then you turn it into a piece of exactly gorgeous work. Now, like this uh, unit here, how long does it take to to do everything like you're doing to the, to this current one okay. to, from start to finish? I know, I know you're not trying to set any records, but uh, no, typically... We always get them done within a year, and wow. usually uh, quite a bit less. And each time we do it, we, we, it, it goes a little faster. Right. This is Rusty One, Rusty and one, the yeah. reason for that one, sorry about the dust, boys and girls, yeah, well, you're working. is that this one had the most wonderful patina. Take a look at this. this is, I, ha I hate to do this, but... Oh, <laughs> we can do it. It doesn't hurt anything. We have our McGuire's wax and we use bug slide. We use a little bit of everything. Whatever's there that's really good, we do. But you notice the patina on this. Right. And this is Sausalito Fire Department, S okay. SFD. And we found this had been sitting in the woods for 50 years and rusted. <laughs> and there was no way I could, I, I, I could not in good conscience destroy that and paint it. Right. So we said, what the hell, we're going to make it rusty. Exactly. And I had a set of fenders that I got from a friend of mine in Florida, and the front one and the rear one are in, in actuality one fender that we cut in half. Oh. They went almost around. It was the darndest looking okay. thing there. I think they were made for Mercedes. And then we added this piece to it to give it the length in the front. The front sits like, you know, this way catching the dirt and the rear catches it down back that way. So that's actually two fenders cut in half made to four fenders. Wow, good idea. And then this is all Philippine mahogany here. And then we put the screws in. Didn't need the screws, but we put them in wow, nice because accent. they look cool. Yeah. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, uh, Hispan uh, not the Hisp yeah, I guess it was the Hispano Suez, the copper bodied Hispano Suez with tulip wood. So it's our own little recommendation. This is the Italian pre-war King of Italy's coat of arms. So, and you know, they're a lot like a lot of the European ones of that period. But it just, it adds that little bit of bling bling. Another interesting piece, you see the switches over there, the funny great looking switches? Right. They are light switches ah. from England, and they're over 100 years old, and they're hard to get in England, so I actually was able to buy 17 out of an old Maharaja palace that they were tearing down in India. And the reason we use those is because when they're up, they're absolutely off. When they're down, they're on. Right now, we've got everything turned off, right. so we have them reversed on there. But it's absolutely incredible because if you look at the Bibi Peugeot that won Indianapolis in 1914, that's the switch they used for the kill switch because it Excellent. worked absolutely every time. There were no regrets. It wasn't like, oh, something screwed up on the switch. Right. doesn't screw up on the switch. Yeah. It's either on or it's off, yeah. period. So we use all sorts of contemporary uh, and uh, uh, to-the-period instruments. Some of them even work. And as I like to say, it's a real hot rod. It's got three pedals and gears to pull and push. Yep. Yep. Ah. Yeah. This is our shifter here. It's four speed, three forward, one reverse. Uh -huh. Then the emergency brake, which operates independently. But then in, when you're working the foot pedal, it works in conjunction with the other brakes hmm. on the rear. So if the, everything works. And uh, the new one's going to be chain drive also? Oh, everything we do is chain drive. Okay, yeah. I think it's the most interesting, and people oh, haven't yeah. seen it before. I have many, many people that come up to me and say, my guy, yeah. how does this, we had one, this is a good one, guy came up to Andreas and said, oh, I see you got bicycle chains. How does it work? <laughs> you bicycle, bicycle chains, chain. yeah. I said, oh, we about had a, we had a laugh on that one, needless <laughs> to say, bicycle chains. Yeah. This is the... Uh, our little baby, the, the Batmobile, yeah. 100 year old Batmobile. Actually, it's 102 years old. 102 and years old. We had a wonderful, we built it and we were just so happy with it. And let me show you what happened. 
You notice this up here? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We had been invited by the Pasadena Art College of Design to show it on Sunday. So Saturday we worked like little chipmunks and beavers <laughs> and we worked our butt off at about two o'clock in the afternoon. We had it sitting right over where our chassis is right there. And I said to Andreas, I said, hey, let's back it out and check it in the sunlight. Give it that final thing. He said, let's go for it. So I opened the garage door and he got in and he turned the he pressed the button and went boom and wow. it blew the plug right through the top of the hood. I want to tell you, talk about heart attack city time. That was it. And here's the culprit that did, did that. This is your plugs. And they're made out of aluminum, and they and they had the threads on them. And then another plug, spark plug sitting here, because it has 24 plugs. I'll show you the engine in a second. Somebody, unbeknownst to me, years ago, didn't like the aluminum threads, so they machined them off, and they put on a steel sleeve, and then they put on the threads, and they put these three little pins in it, but they put them right at the very bottom. Well, hmm. over the years... Right. They've weakened, and when it finally let go, it went through right straight through the hood. And it would have went 150 feet in the air <laughs> if it had to been stopped by the hood. And even pulled it away from the stainless steel hinge. So what in the hell could we do? I ran up to Michael's, because it blew all the pieces out. It didn't hurt anything. We had another one of these that we right. cleaned up quickly. So I went up to Michael's up at the corner, and I bought... All these stickers, and Andreas and I figured out what to put, so it was a Batmobile, so we did, you know, clunk, bang, boom, arg, wham, you know, just like in the comic books, the Marvel comic books. <laughs> Perfect. So, anyhow, we had it finally, we painted it, had our friend uh, paint it, and do it again. These are the blocks for this particular car that we're building. This is a Type 75, and they're, all these are all amazing things because they've been sand cast. And they were sandcast, and they did this way over 100 years ago, very intricate with the water jackets and everything. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. So seven of them have been these particular engines, both Type 75 or the or Type 12, which were the little bit bigger ones. This one is an engine from a Seagraves. And if you look at it here, it's a beautiful thing, but it's... 14, it's 16 liters, 1,009 cubic inch, 1,013 cubic inches, and it has 24 plugs, and that's 12 on the distributor right. and 12 on the magneto. Here's your distributor, there's your magneto, and a, and a separate block for each plug, or for each uh, uh, um, piston. Right. It's really an amazing thing. So it's a 12 sonar. And it really has some guts. I mean, it really is big. But see how pretty you can make them? Oh, yeah. They're, they literally are works of art. I can see why you uh, do all this now. It's just that, yeah, because... Well, people there's... ask that, and what it is, truthfully, they're important. And they saved lives, and they, they deserve a better end than to be destroyed and thrown out in the woods or left out to rot in the fields where we find them. An amazing part of it is we're able to get these things running in very short order. Yeah. Has uh, Have you found anybody else uh, in your travels that have the same interest in building these? Pardon me, sir? Anybody else in your travels uh, finding these and building them? Uh, I guess we're, there's a person that will occasionally do one or they'll do an old roadster and they just, they don't even, yeah. they just remove the pump and that and, and make them into kind of look like beer roadsters. I like to make them into cars, yeah. into, into a theme that you're proud to drive. And it's evidence that we win a hell of a lot with them yes, you because do. when you pull in, yeah. You're the only guy in the neighborhood. Right. And then they say, how come you build so many boat tails? Well, I won a great American race in 84 with a boat tail, won 100 grand. That was like one and a half a million. Yeah, so. That was on a car that had been in a mudslide in a fire, a Bentley. So I love boat tails. People say, how come you build so many boat tails? I said, how many do you see at this show? And well, there's 300 cars. We don't see any. Oh, I get it. Yeah, exactly. So that's why we do that. And two, you have fond memories of the winnings. Yeah. <laughs> You want to come and see the other yeah. cars while we're, we'll walk through? Yeah, let's go do it. Show you the other cars. 
Wow. You haven't even been to this part of the garage. This is oh, where God. we Jeez, do a little bit of the pooping around with it, the way. And uh, the Batmobile, just point of interest, the Barrises, George Barris and his, right. his family, lives eight doors from us. Yeah, that's what uh, people saying on the way in. Tremendous people. And here's Joji and Barry Barris and George Barris, of course. And then uh, Jay Leno, we've been on his show four times, the garage show. And these are some of the, just some of the stuff. And this was my big day when I sold my Frenet. I do regular cars, and that was it. I had it 27 years. Wow. We set the world record with it, 1,700,000, and that was on April Fool's Day in 1906, on April Fool's Day. And since it sold... I helped sell it for two and a half million, and then it just recently sold again for four million, and it still holds the record as the most expensive post-war, pre-owned Rolls Royce or Bentley in the history of the world. Wow! And uh, this was the car that we won the Great American Race with. That was it. And this is the Frenet again, this was winning Hurlingham, which is the best to show there, and that's in London, and that is their Pebble Beach. And these are just different cars. This is like, we built a blue train special and supercharged it in the front, which was kind of fun. All the woodwork on that one, interestingly enough, was one from one 300-year-old elm tree. That's mm. structural wood and also the beautiful wood, and halfway through it, the guy that was doing the wood had to quit. So we got a new guy. And, my, and I said to my friend, well, what's he do? He said, well, what's his experience? He said, well, he's never done a car before. I said, well, well what's he do? He says, he's a violin maker. I said, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> and he did all this inlay in silver and mother of pearl. And I mean, just unbelievable. We've got some great people. That was the great American race car right there that we won with. That was a, a big day, I got to tell you. That was exciting. Yeah. And then these are just other little pictures. My first car, race car, was a 1930 Garner Special that called it the Armpit Special for <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah, flipped it the week before I was to be married <laughs> at Mostport Park at about 130 miles an hour for running Formula Libra. And uh, didn't hurt myself too much, just bruised all the hell. Called my wife and said, I just retired. And she said, that's good. You're getting married <laughs> next week, stupid. I said, okay, come on. I'll give you a...